Hey everybody, it's Chris Lote here, and in the screencast, I'm going to share with you how to set up a shared document on the portal. So I'm just going to go, I've already made a group. Um, this is, you can go up here in your My Groups on the portal, and you can create your own group. I've already made one, Chris and Lisa Shared Files. I'm going to go into there. And the Shared Documents uh, app or widget can be added to any class site or to any group. And here's the home page for this group, and you can see I already have the shared documents. If you don't have that already, you would go up here to Settings, click on Features, and there's the Shared Documents feature. So I'm just going to pop back into the group. So I have a uh, Shared Documents place here, or um, application, and I want to create a new document. So this is one that I can share. So I click on New Document. I have the choice of making any of those. Just so you know, if you have, if you plan on having multiple shared documents and you want to put them into a folder, you have to create the folder first, then the document would go into the folder. You can't create a, a document and then put it into a folder later. You have to do this first. So I'm just going to do a separate document though. Click on Word document. This is going to be the test doc for screencast and I click OK. So I'm making this shared document. It pops up into a um, Word view and it's Word Online and I can start typing start typing here. Now, um, so the shared part. Um, so I've added a little bit of information. I would go up here to where the, the share button is. I click on that and what this will do is this will open up a new window and for me to share. And I can enter the names of the people I want to, to share this with. So it could be, I can type in Sarah Lote and there she is. So Sarah Lote will get a message with the, um, with the invitation. I can also click on this. It, we can have, it requires a sign into the portal. Um, if I do that, it will allow them to access it as a guest without having to sign in to the portal. You, it's your choice. Uh, I can include a personal message. I'm not going to do that. I can go over here. Uh, it can be read or view only, but of course, if it's a shared document, you want them to be able to edit. And then I click on share. them in Sarah's email and you can see here's the email that I sent to her and over here you can see that you can click on this link this is the um, link to open it up you can also see down here that uh, you can um, click on this guest link and that will open it up without having to sign in and if I click I click on that guest link and this is what I get um, when I as a guest to add to this document I can't I, you know Hit, click on there, nothing happens. So I have to go over here, of course, to edit in browser. And then I can, um, clicking on edit in browser, I can edit the document. This does not allow me to edit in Word. It only allows me to edit in the browser, which is what most people are going to do anyways. Um, if I finish that, I'm going to close it. And those changes will be saved. If I go back to the group, and test document for the screencast, you can see that those changes have been made in real time. This link. If you want students to access this, you would have to provide them with a link because within that internal uh, sharing, the email that is sent, the students will not be able to receive that email right now. So unfortunately, um, students would have to type in the URL, which is pretty long. So I would suggest maybe a URL shortener, um, which is in the resources section of this week's crafty email. So a, um, and I will show that one in just a couple of minutes. So you can use a URL shortener for the kids to access this or even a QR code, which I think I shared last week. All right, so hopefully you find this shared documents feature useful. Thank you.